So in today's video, we're gonna be working on my van. I have new stainless steel coolant lines. Here's the coolant pipes. They're under all of my bags and uh, kind of a hassle to carry. I have a new radiator. I have all new uh, soft lines. This is a Nissan brand radiator, which there's a bunch of mixed reviews about these. There's a bunch of fake ones being sold. The original ones are way too expensive. So I got this one. They say it's decent and we're gonna try it. So that's the new radiator. These are the new coolant pipes. Supposedly they're for a 2.1, which is what this van is originally. I got the radiator kit. So this will join these two at the bottom of this thing. And this is the engine kit, which I won't use because I have a Subaru engine. We have a Vimo. Uh, it says made in China right on the top, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Coolant temperature switch for the radiator fans. Figured I'd replace it while I was in there. Also got a gasket for that because sometimes these don't seal and I just bought that while I was ordering. A buddy of mine, when I was traveling, he is down in Miami named Emilio. He has a YouTube channel called Gotta Split and he's the one that gave me these coolant lines. So he bought these and they were wrong or maybe he ordered the wrong ones, I don't know. And uh, then he bought more for his van. So yeah, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have these and I would probably just run the stock coolant lines. And maybe maybe this is gonna save me from a future breakdown that would be a nightmare. I don't know. But um, yeah, huge shout out to him for giving me these coolant lines. And also he gave me these uh, soft lines too. So this back, I'm not too sure about. Like this one looks fine going up to the engine, but this one's like, has that 90 degree. And I don't know why or where that's gonna go, but if it's wrong, I have a TIG welder, I have stainless steel filler rod, and you best believe I'm gonna be chopping these things up and making them work. The ramp kept moving. Every time I pulled the van up, it would just shoot the thing out. So I had to prop it up. When we got so much junk laying around here, I had to prop up this ramp. And that's my adjustment, the vise. And yeah, so this held it in place. So here we are laying on the ground, <laughs> working on the van. Here is the condenser, which hasn't been used in like 15 years. So I may take that out, leave it out. Even though I plan on putting AC back on this van, I don't think I would use that regardless or these lines. So that's all coming out. Oh, so that is the way to do it. I don't know what else to do. It's crazy working on this stuff, thinking that this radiator has been in there since before I was born. I was born in 91 and this fan's in 80, was put together in 87. 12 millimeter, you're gonna need that. Um, they tighten this up pretty good. It has an O-ring on there. So I'm guessing they build this to uh, still hold water, even without the sensor. This is a plastic housing, which I guess the original one was too. And there's like a crush washer on this. I don't know how that's gonna seal. You definitely wanna snug that thing up. I just use a wrench because I had the size. And I will take the other sensor out of that radiator because I know it works. All right guys, I got four new washers that I put on. There's two on the bottom, two on the top. And they go right on this little guy. Got my radiator in last night. I didn't film any of it, but it was super easy to do. Don't have any of the lines or anything hooked up. The only thing I did was just raise it up. I raised it up with the jack and a piece of wood. And I had my dad align the top because there's like a little post coming off the radiator and a hole that you got to align it in. And that's pretty much where it lives. And I pushed up on the radiator, which relieved the tension of this and it fell and it fell directly on my nose. And I'm sure you can see how swollen that is. It hurts so bad. It's still, it kills. It's freaking, don't do that. I did look at my stock coolant temp switch versus this one, 92, 98, new 105, or 95 to 102. So the stock one, I'm guessing turns on at a lower temperature than the new one. By four degrees, that's the high and then that's the low fan switch kind of at a loss and I don't know what to do there because obviously I would think running a coolant a lower coolant temp would be better um, especially that 102 for the high that's like I feel like that's just too much for the high speed to come on so this is what they look like in the van and you can see that one how there's that thing that's pressed in there and that one's pressed in way further I don't know what the heck's going on here but yeah so <laughs> these are coming out 
Well, I got it all out. And it was kind of hard to get the tank out because there's so many freaking lines and there's just stuff running everywhere. So I've been climbing under the van today for several hours. I got some of the coolant pipes in. I just kind of set them in there, um, fished them through all the holes and whatnot, and they're basically cut in half compared to the plastic ones. I also took out all my old AC lines, which is just ripping crap apart, cutting them all up, the lines apart. Uh, original metal hangers that hang the plastic lines, I don't think they're gonna work. I hate to do it, but it's not gonna work. So I've been crawling around on the ground pretty much all day, messing with this stuff. And I got this uh, tube right here. It needs to, you know, come out like this. Hack this off and I'm gonna cut this at a 10 degree. And then I'm gonna cut this at a 10 degree and that I will be able to get a 20. When you weld stainless together, you wanna make sure you clean the surfaces that you're welding. If there's any oil or any crap on there, then it will weld bad. So you get some acetone and clean it off. Also, you want to either back purge your pipe or you want to use this solar flux. So that's the solar flux and I just got a little bit in this uh, water bottle that I kind of cut off and you want to mix this. So you want to use alcohol. It says methanol preferred. Um, I'm pretty sure this heat stuff is methanol. I painted a little bit on the inside of this. Also this. This is like a super old school way to uh, block the oxygen from getting to your weld, but uh, it does work, so I'm gonna tack this. So, this is uh, strong enough now to where I can get up under the van, test it out, make sure it fits right, make sure it looks good, and then I'm gonna add that other little piece on the top of this. I just climbed under the van and fitted this up. Everything looks good. This angle is absolutely perfect. So, here I'm gonna put a five degree which means I need to cut this at two and a half. I got that little dial back here set at two and a half. Uh, I'm gonna cut this, cut this. This ha also has the barbed, the little flared end on it. So the hose is actually gonna get one. This side is just, just stock, it has that. These, these are what I've been waiting on. And since the original mounts don't really work for these stainless steel coolant lines, I had to kind of make something up. And these are one and a half inch stainless steel with a little rubber insulator clamps. And they will clamp these hoses, these pipes, and they'll allow me to mount them and they'll be tight and they're not gonna move anywhere. They're not gonna rattle around or anything. And these holes are just big enough which is perfect, but they're just big enough for a five millimeter screw to go through. And luckily I have some of them on hand, so I'll be able to make up some brackets and easily be able to secure these in place. So this is supposed to be the rear outer uh, coolant pipe. This does not fit for the rear outer. It fits for the rear inner. And it would fit even better if I were to chop it right there flare here is what I got written, which is really that little bubble on the end. So if that was there, it would work a lot better. And I've been fighting with this thing for hours, trying to get it to work. And I switched this one with the other one and they fit up way nicer and way better to the engine and how the coolant is routed. So I'm gonna cut this huge section out and then add the uh, this end piece right about there. And then this thing will fit and it'll work this long bend that I got right here on this thing, it just, it works better for the other one. So I'm gonna have to chop this. So here are the pieces. They are all cleaned up, ready to go. Wiped them down with some acetone and deburred them because that chop saw leaves a super nasty finish. I'm gonna just tack that really good. Maybe like four spots to that and it'll just be a shorter piece. Um, and then I'll test fit, it, fit this. So we got three little tiny tacks on it. I had to lengthen this. That was here. Had to lengthen that. Had to, this was my first uh, angle. Had to make that. Um, that's a 20 degree. Also, this is a 20 degree. 